What's up, what's up everybody? So today, we're going full cinematic mode, y'all. So today I want to talk to you guys about a really cool little lens that I just got. This is the Cire 35mm anamorphic lens. Um, it is a 1.8 aperture, so it actually it, it opens up, does pretty well in low light. It's a micro four thirds mount, but it's actually an APS-C size lens. Now I'll get into why that's actually pretty cool here in a second, but to be honest, this is probably the coolest lens that I've ever bought, and I will definitely be getting the entire set because, my God, I, I love these things. Real quick, as far as the build quality goes, I mean, this thing is, it, it, it feels like a tank. I mean, it's it's kind of heavy, but it's, you know, it's got the focus gear built into it. I didn't add this, it actually just kind of came like that. And you can control your aperture manually on the back. It's just, overall, it's really great. It's, and one of the things that I noticed, it is a really long focus throw. To get all the way around, I don't, I don't know if you guys can really see it, but to get all the way from here, I don't know, I just, I, I found that whenever I went and I, I shot a music video for a band called Soothsayer just recently, this is literally the only lens that I used for that entire shoot. What I found when I was on set with them is I was sitting there and I was like, I just, I felt like I was cranking the, the focus wheel because I'm used to, I'm used to photography lenses where, you know, I mean, you barely crank those things and it's like, all right, my focus has just jumped like 10 feet. So it's kind of cool. It, it definitely, it makes it a little bit easier for manual focusing. Um, I don't know the specifics as to what that distance actually is on this thing. Um, I do know that it's a little bit difficult when you're focusing long range between like those like, you know, 10 to 20 feet shots versus infinite. But I mean, that's basically any budget cinema lens that you're going to find anyway. Now, what makes an anamorphic lens an anamorphic lens? Well, what that means is it films. And if you guys can see on the, the front of it, so it actually, so it's a, it, 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 it's, it's a squeezed image. And what that means is it's it's not filming like most lenses that are you know already wide. It actually compresses the images in like this, so that in post you can actually de-squeeze it, and it gives you a little bit wider field of view. So the thing about shooting a 35 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds sensor, what that means is because it's a crop sensor, you have to multiply the length of the lens. So 35 millimeter, you'll have to multiply that by two to get what it would be on a full frame lens. Full frame equivalent to 35 mil is 70 millimeters. So that's that's a pretty tight shot. Um, one of my favorite lenses is an 85, and I can tell you right now that there's no way in hell I'm shooting a full band unless I'm in a warehouse, like way back far, you know, that tight of a focus. Now, where the anamorphic comes in that I think is pretty cool is because you're de-squeezing the image, it's, it's kind of like a hybrid. So imagine shooting a 70 millimeter lens but having the width of, I mean, with these, it's it's about a 50. So you really, you you still get the same height, like there's no height adjustment, but as far as your width, you do capture more image on screen. Now, that being said, there are other qualities that people go for when they're picking anamorphic lenses. And with this one, if anybody's ever seen like, like Star Trek, there are so many damn lens flares in that, that it's just like, it, it's almost every scene. And you get that by using anamorphic. The way that these lenses work is when the light hits it, it just, it creates this really beautiful, just blue streak across the whole image. I find it really cool if you, some people find it a little distracting. So it's kind of a stylistic choice. So if you don't want that, maybe this isn't the lens for you, but I wanted that. And I want that for a lot more of the stuff that I'm shooting, which is primarily music videos. It doesn't mean, you know, if I was to shoot a corporate documentary or a corporate video, like if I'm shooting a training video for your company, no, I'm probably not going to have ridiculous lens flares going off. I'm not going to I'm not going to go too stylized. Typically for that you want a little bit more clean look, but for let's just be real, for the fun shit that we do for our own short films, for our own music videos or, you know, just things like that, add some pizzazz to your life. This will do it. Another cool thing is because it's anamorphic, the the bokeh does change a little bit. You will get a whereas traditional cinema lenses or photography lenses, like the bokeh is more like circular with an anamorphic lens because you are de-squeezing and you're kind of pulling it out. Um, the circles turn more into ovals and that's cool. I mean, personally, when I'm, when I'm watching, you know, footage, I'm not really paying attention to stuff like that, but it is kind of a nice, just artistic touch to add to it. To me, that's not something that's ever really sold me. I, I saw this and I was just like, yo, lens flares, let's go. But 
to each their own. So now getting to the, the fact that this is an APS-C lens with a micro four thirds mount. So what that means is if you have an APS-C sensor camera, so that can be, or a Super 35, that can be anything from, if you have like a Sony FX30, those are, it's a Super 35. And so those are a little bit wider than your micro four thirds. I mentioned earlier the two times crop factor on a micro four thirds sensor. Well, on a Super 35 or APS-C sensor, that crop is actually closer to 1.5, give or take. What that means is a 35, rather than turning into a 70, now turns into something closer to a 50, which is really cool. The camera that I like using this with is a Z cam. I just got one recently. I will be doing a video on it. I'm actually filming on it right now. And so far I, I love it, but I'm, I'm, I wanna get some more work in before I, before I do a full review on it. That being said, because it's a micro four thirds lens, I can mount it to my Z cam, which is an APS-C size sensor. And it actually gives me a wider field of view than had I used it on my Blackmagic. Now, all of the test footage that I have right now all comes from my Blackmagic. So as long as you have the space to back up, you're good. It's gonna get a great image. It's super sharp where it needs to be. It's super, I don't know, it just has a texture to it. Um, typically with anamorphic lenses, they're sharper in the center. And then it just kind of falls off like very, smoothly towards the edges and it's a look it's it's something that whenever you're if you're if you choose to shoot like i said short films music videos anything with a creative look these lenses do a lot of the legwork and just kind of giving you a different image than normal uh, i know a lot of youtubers lately have actually started shifting and they're shooting primarily anamorphic it just makes your video kind of stand out a little bit from everyone else's for a long time on this channel if you ever watch any of my vlog episodes I will do B-roll cuts in between, you know, talking head points. And the thing that I do is, I, you know, you always add the fake black bars on, on the top and bottom of the frame. And that that's cool. It makes it look more cinematic. We'll just use that. I know it's like a dirty word on YouTube, but I don't know. Like when you're talking to somebody who doesn't know film and you just say, hey, I want to make this look as cinematic as possible. They know exactly what you're talking about. So run with that. That's my TED talk on that. But anyways. Whenever you do, whenever I put those black bars on my footage, what I'm going for is that more, you know, just movie-esque vibe. Cool thing about anamorphic lenses is you don't have to add fake black bars because when you de-squeeze that image, you create them yourself. It's it's just, it's baked into the footage at that point. It's what everyone else is trying to do when they put the ba fake black bars on their stuff. This just does it for real. I really like it. I think that Sierra made a dope product. I think I got mine, I got this one used for, I think I paid like 300 bucks for it. I wanna get more. I wanna try the 24 because I wanna have an anamorphic lens that I can shoot a, a full band with. I wanna have space. I, I don't like feeling like my, you know, the moment I, I turn my camera on, I point it at somebody and it just feels like I'm right up in their face. I wanna back off or at least have the option to, because I feel like coupling it with this and being able to switch between the two gives you both looks that are just really nice and pretty just cinematic. <laughs> I got nothing else for you. As far as downsides, I would say that, you know, the biggest plus of this lens is also its biggest negative. Um, the blue streaks. If that's not what you're looking for, this lens sucks. Because it's going to give it to you and sometimes it gives it to you a little heavy. You kind of got to learn it figure out when, you know, when it's doing what, and if that's the look that you're going for. But if, like I said, if you don't like it, then yeah, you could like getting it out of your footage. And then I would say my only other big critique, I don't like how far away the minimum focal length is. This lens, you, you basically, I, I want to see it. I think it says 0.85 meters. Well, thank you, metric system. I'm in America. I have no idea. It, it, it's far, okay? Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, it's at least the length of my arm away. I don't know. It's not a macro lens. Just understand that. And so there are times where I like, because, you know, sometimes you want to get close. You want to use it as a close-up lens. That's fine. But there are times where I have just like, I'll be on set and you'll just hear that, that like, that clicking sound because I just went all the way and I'm like, oh shit, I got to back up, hang on. It is kind of annoying, but it works. Ultimately, like I said, Sire, this lens is awesome. I'm so glad that you guys came out with these. Fantastic lens for a really low price point. And if you guys are watching this, please, I want to check out more of y'all stuff. I, it, it's funny, I just built this cinema rig for my Z cam and I went as far as to like the, just the, down to the rails. I was like, yo, anything that's Sire that I can use, I want to try and use it. I don't know, when you find stuff you like, you rep them. And I'm a big fan. I want to try more of their cinema lenses. They have a full frame. The, I think it's the Jupiter series. I really want to try that out. In the meantime, I'm going to build my collection of anamorphics because this is, it's kind of like with, you know, with photographers, you'll see them jump into film as like their artistic hobby side of photography. 
I kind of see anamorphic lenses like that. Like I, I want to be eventually, I want to know enough about anam anamorphics to just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. When you get anamorphic questions, you come ask Brian. But anyways, guys, if you guys like what you see, please be sure like subscribe, do all the things. I know it's been a while since I put out a video. As you guys can see, I have changed locations. So there will be more content coming out soon. I will be getting on this a lot more consistently, but yeah, let me know what, let me know. Just, just say what's up, drop a like, ask a question in the comments. I know that there are, you know, I, the response that I got on some of the videos that I just recently posted on like the, the, the Canon R6, the tube lights, it, it's incredible. I, I never thought that, I don't know, I, just, I didn't expect people to jump on that stuff that fast. I love interacting with you guys. So if y'all have questions, let me know. As always guys, thank you so much. Catch you on the next one. Peace.